Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Local Influencers Podcast. I'm Abel, and on today's podcast, I have Maria Perez with me. Maria, thank you for joining me today. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, so Maria does freelance work. She's an event planner, coordinator. She's uh, into the digital kind of content as well, and she works animals all day love that journey for you so if you hear animals guys she is currently working and yeah so maria you have a lot happening <laughs> everyone i talk to you every every time i talk to someone i'm like man i thought i was busy and i'm like no everyone's busy everyone is busy all right so let's get into a little bit about what you do you wanted to look for our listeners just kind of a broad overview of, like if someone asks like what do you do right because i went to your website and i saw like the event planning is that like your passion mm -hmm. Where does your passion lie? I guess that's the better uh, question. In Corpus, if that isn't a lame answer. Um, so I guess like a long-winded and short answer is when I graduated high school, our keynote speaker said, industry is changing and growing and all of you that are leaving Corpus, you're going to want to come back in three to five years because industry is getting bigger and new businesses are going to be coming into the area and you're going to realize what you're seeking elsewhere is home. Like it, it's here now. And of course me and my three best friends were like, mm, no, by Corpus. So we left and I ended up coming back home due to some family issues. And I kind of landed in um, CC seven day, the Corpus Christi film festival. Um, Heidi Havda invited me to volunteer. I loved it. Um, and then it kind of went to me being on the steering committee for about seven years. Uh, I didn't do it in 2020 or last year because I was pregnant and then had my son. Um, but I'm really excited for this year uh, to do that. And then it it's like seven day and Heidi honestly kind of changed my life in a way because I knew I liked media in high school and college. I knew I wanted to go into communication but I thought I wanted to be a speech teacher, like as lame as that sounds. Um, and then seven day kind of taught me like volunteer management and event planning and event management and all that stuff. And of course, Casey with House of Rock is insane with all the things he does at one time. And so kind of having him there, not like as an official mentor for me, but being able to see what him and Stephanie do at House of Rock and kind of learn and grow from that really helped me um and then from there I actually interned with the city and it was very um here's something figure out how to do it or here's kind of an idea figure out how it's going to work and how people are going to like it so I was interning when the city redid the recycle right campaign where we ended up making like little characters and did little cameo commercials with them and after that, I was like, okay, I like the social media aspect of it. I really like the creation aspect of it. I can't draw to save my life, but like the design, the layout, the typography, that kind of stuff. I love that. Um, and then from there, I went to a nonprofit, loved that, ended up doing a TEDx Cole Park talk. Um, and then when COVID hit and I got furloughed, I was like, you know, there's so many people trying to plan weddings or baby showers or whatever it is, and they just don't know how, and they're overwhelmed and whatever. And so I ended up planning and doing the decorations and stuff for my own baby shower. And then I helped a friend and then my mother-in-law needed decorations for something. So I started doing that. And then people were asking her and me like, oh, well, how much do you charge? And what do you do? And can you also do this for me? And so it kind of just snowballed into where I am now. Um, I'm the development coordinator at the Gulf Coast Humane Society. So grant writing, event planning, donor relations, do all that. Um, on top of my freelance stuff that I do right now, it's we're recording this in April and my best friend gets married this Saturday and I'm her wedding planner. So it's kind of a fun little mix of what I do. I don't know, like my passion is my life, if that makes sense. It I don't you're doing what you like. You, you you're passionate yeah, you're doing I, in every aspect of it really right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna it after high school I came to this realization that me wanting to leave Corpus was literally rooted in the fact that most of my life everyone was saying Corpus is not fun and you need to leave. And so that's what I thought I wanted. I thought I didn't want to be here. I thought I hated Corpus. I thought I hated everything that could possibly be offered to me here. And then kind of once I 
found what I was passionate about and found people who shared the same ideas that I shared, or at least kind of in the same sector of it, I was not only happy with myself more and happy with Corpus, I was happy just in general with life. Because I think if you have friends or even colleagues or even in an industry that doesn't support you and your dreams and your aspirations, you need to figure something out and get get the hell out of there. And that's kind of where I was like wanting to go into the education field. It's so stressful and just stressful. And especially me wanting to teach college, it was kind of an aspect where people were telling me, oh, it's hard. Oh, you're going to hate it. And then so I hated it. And it was hard. And me getting away from people who tried to hold me back and me getting away from people who hated what I liked made my life a whole lot easier. So that's kind of what I do. (laughs) That's awesome. And you mentioned like stressful, right? And I have a friend that's actually uh, assistant principal at a middle school here in town. And she like is obsessed. Like she loves uh, her job. I have friends that are coaches and teachers in Houston and they love uh, their jobs. I'm like, that could never be me. Yeah. Never. And it's just um, a whole of accounting. I'm like, girl, no. Like, yeah. I like, I, it's funny because I do a lot of creative stuff outside of my full time job. My full time job, I'm a manager in retail and I like, thrive in it because it's like I'm very much an kind of like an intro like force extrovert kind of because I'm I need to recharge I'm not really an extrovert I'm kind of an introvert You're like an extroverted maybe. introvert yes I like my downtime but then I have to recharge and so retail yeah. I get to deal with so many people every day but then I get to come home and do things like on my days off like this where it's intimate. It's just a one, one-on-one or me and my best friends, we have podcasts together and we do that. And I write, you know, and that's kind of my outlet. It's like my quiet time when I'm writing a book, my books. And so, like you said, like you have to be passionate about what you do. And like those, my friends that are teachers, I'm like, God bless you. Cause I could never relate. And it's, and it's funny you say stress, like, like those seem stressful, like stressful, stressful jobs. And I would say that too, but it's like, planning something is very stressful because i'm in the middle of planning a larger scale like a a convention right and that it's we're uh, just we're over a year out and i'm stressed and i like planning things is, is very stressful and some people that's why they hire event coordinators and planners because you know that is a stressful thing and then you said that you threw your own baby shower and they always say like some of the most stressful things to do is like have a baby move and something else and i'm like get you married. were get, yeah get married you were gonna have a baby and you were doing the planning aspect of your own baby shower i'm like how did you not go crazy <laughs> uh i <laughs> so if you weeks ago i guess i was talking <laughs> to my mom about this wedding that's coming up um, I had two weddings. My sister-in-law got married on the second. My best friend gets married on the 23rd, which is in two days. And I was telling my mom, I was like, I don't think I can go. Whatever. I think we're going to go do something or whatever. I was like, mom, I, I don't want to go. Like, I know it's just dinner or whatever it was, but I'm just so busy. Like I have all this stuff going on and, and I'm, I'm going on this rant and I'm like in my office, like about to cry. Cause I'm like getting so stressed out about it. And my mom goes, are you done? And I was like, what, what do you mean? Am I done? They're like, I'm trying to talk to you. And she goes, you've had so much to do your whole life. Like what makes this any different? And I, like at first it was kind of like a slap to the face. Cause I was like, wow, rude. Like I just want to rant to you. <laughs> You're not wanting to hear it. But then like I thought about it and I was like, okay, she's literally right. Like in high school, I would get bored and pick up things just to be busy. And I don't know if that's cause I'm a controlling person. If that's cause I just like being helpful. I don't know. But so like my junior and senior year of high school, I was on prom committee, senior year. I was president of prom committee. Um, I've always kind of liked event planning. I just didn't think it was a job. Like no one told me that, you know? And I think that's also a big thing just that not that's wrong, but needs to change with our education system is that people just push college so much and don't realize that there's industries that need professionals. There's, I mean, there's literally kids making millions of dollars on TikTok, you know, like it's like jobs aren't just something that needs a four to 10 year college degree in order to make money. It's, I think if you have a passion and you're good at your passion and you can monetize it, then hell yeah, go for it. But if you want to have your hobby and have a nine to five job and do whatever on the side to make your money. You're still an artist. You're still doing what you love. It's just, you're also being realistic. 
if you don't want to monetize it. And some people don't want to because then it's not a hobby anymore. It's a job and then you start hating it. Um, but yeah, I've always been busy. Um, I also technically planned my own wedding. Um, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I'm just controlling. Now I'm realizing that. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think I'm the same way as you. I think like I... I I'm like I stay stressed like I wake up stressed and then I'm like if I'm not stressing I'm like why am I not Something's stressed? Wrong. What's happening? <laughs> right and, and I feel like I always have to have control of situations so I feel like that's why I, I'm always like in a leadership position or I always like yeah um, like have all these bright ideas so I'm like I need to control it I want to be the one to do it you know yeah. like you said yeah I'm in that shoe I'm in that boat it's like I have a day job right like my bread and butter but I am I when I'm there I love it and I give them my all but then I come home and I, I have four books published and I have podcasts and I have all this stuff going on, you know, but I know like I, I'm not at the point where I could just give up my day job. Cause then I don't know that I, yeah. I think I would just drive myself crazy with my own thoughts all day, not, not having coworkers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, like, <laughs> uh, and so when you're planning, so what is that? what does that look like? Cause I've had on season six of the podcast, we I had a wedding planner. I've had a couple of event coordinators, like different types of like, you know, in the industry, but what does your process look like? So if you have a client, do you, do you have like a, um, like where y'all meet up and you kind of talk about like their ideas or do you have mm -hmm. like, you know, their what aesthetic they're looking for? What does your process look like when someone comes to you? Yeah, so I guess the funniest example is my father-in-law's 50th birthday was this past December. Um, and my mother-in-law came to me like four months before and she goes, hey, so I convinced dad to like have a big party. And I was like, okay, cool. So what are we doing? And she goes, I don't know. We want you to plan it. And I was like, cool, cool. Gonna do that. Great. Love this for me. And I was like, okay, well, what do you want? And he was like, I don't know. And they're very big wine drinkers. They're very big, like, cook at home and have a nice bottle of wine, whatever. So I had already started planning. I was like, I want it at the Chamberlain. I want it, well, the Beacon on top of the Chamberlain. I was like, I want it. I want Black Diamond Decatur. I want this. And I had, I literally had it planned. And then they throw this curveball and I go to talk to them. And my father-in-law goes, I want an 80s themed party. And I was like, excuse? Where the hell does that even come from? And so I had to pivot literally like 180 degrees and go to eighties. And it was so hard because I was like, what do you want? Like, do you want like classic 80, like not neon and annoying, but you want like the muted colors on some people, like kind of like the grungy rocker vibe, like classic rock vibe going. And he was like, no, yeah, like, like that, like a calm down, tone down vibe of it, whatever. And so I was like, how much can I spend? Because I can spend a hundred dollars on this party, or I can spend five thousand dollars on this party. Like, what? What's our what's our range? What's and your budget, so, yeah. yeah, so he gave me his number, and we ended up. Um, I booked that bus, which love them. Um, love, love bus. Love. We <laughs> love bus. A party <laughs> yes, I'm going to a party there on Saturday. Actually, yes, I love it. Freaking love them. And sorry. Anyway, uh, they're so, so great. <laughs> Everybody listening is probably like love. <laughs> I know everyone's like, let's go get that frosé right now. Like <laughs> everybody loves them, yeah. <laughs> um, so we booked bus, and my uncle, well, my husband's uncle Tony actually owns Flaming Girls. Um, so Tony was like, hell yeah, I'll cater. So I was like, got the two big things really: food and drink, and location. And then from there, we just filled it in. So we're like, okay, we need a picture area for pictures. I was like, what custom, what thing do you want people to remember about the party? Do you want it to be the music? Do you want it to be a favor? Do you want it to be an entertainment other than like a band or whatever? And so we ended up doing um, like a cover band and then we did um, custom cups. Um, and it, something else, I don't remember what else. Oh, my sister-in-law ended up getting custom desserts from Bellius um so they were like 80s designs super super low-key but yeah so it ended up working out and they were like oh so like how many hours of work was it and I was like well it was probably like about 80 hours of work total and they're like 80 hours like how do you get that amount and I was like well it's not just me being at the event it's 
me needing to find a photographer and get quotes and me needing to find the venue and get quotes and then you approve things. Was, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is that events and collateral and stuff in general isn't just the stuff. Like there's all the back end of it. There's all the planning. And then once it happens, you're kind of like, okay, well, what's going to go wrong and what's happening and how can I manage it? So I think once I explained it, they were all just like, "Mm, okay, like we get it. Like we understand. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's kind of just figuring budget and vibe is basically how I work it out. I'm like, if you just tell me what you want, I'll figure it out. And my sister-in-law uh, her bridal shower, I designed her invitations for her and printed them. And I was like, well, what do you want? And so she tells me something or she tells me two things. And I was like, these two things do not go together. I was like, is this what you mean? And she goes, yes, that's what I meant. So, and that's also what people don't realize is that it's not just you saying, oh, I want an 80s themed party. It's like, okay, do you want neon? Do you want calmed down? Do you want both? Like, what are we going with? And yeah, even here at the Humane Society, it's the same thing. We have an event coming up at the end of April. And um, my boss, when we were starting the planning process, I was like, do we want upscale and fancy? Do we want more casual and low-key? Like, what are we going for? And then I can tell you what we're going to do from there. So I think that's just in anything. Like, not just, like, an event, but even if you're going to, like, do dinner with your friends, it's like, okay, we're going to the post. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to the post. So are we all dressing cute or not? Like, Literally, so, my no. friends and I. I'm like, so what? Are, what is our vibe tonight? Because I need to know: am I going to look homeless or am I going to be in a suit? Like, like what is our vibe? Am, like, am I going to be homeless in my yoga pants and my sweatshirt, or am I going to be cute yes. in a dress and heels? That's usually yeah. for brunch, like the day after going out. I'm always like, so what is our vibe? Like, like my friend, and she'll text me, and she's like, hey, let's meet for for eating, and I'm like, okay, but my soul hasn't woken up yet. So what are we doing? Like. <laughs> Like I need to know, I need to plan because if we're gonna be dressed up, it's gonna be about three hours because I need my soul needs to catch up with my body. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, I get it. Like you have to kind of just know those things and yeah, like like you said, p- planning things like they don't. Re- I don't think people realize and and anything really like even like writing a book like a lot goes into that and then planning this convention. If if somebody asks me how many hours you put in, I'm like, well, we're, we're over a year out from the convention itself and. I've already put in, uh, do you, you know, people probably like a hundred minimum. Yeah, yeah. Minimum. That's, you know, and that's not even including the, the, just like back and forth with the, with the center, you know, the event that I'm going to, the place I'm going to have at the venue. Sorry. Um, but like, yeah, like you said, people don't, whenever you probably give prices, to people, they don't take into consideration, like, okay, I'm not only doing this for you, like, but it's also like your time. Time is more valuable than anything. Yeah. Right. Have you already come up with like a list of like, if somebody's like has a wedding, you're like, okay, and they want this kind of food. Do you already have like, okay, like a list of vendors, kind of like a Rolodex kind of like, okay, I already know these people I can go to for this or these people I rely on for this. Yes. (laughs) So, and it kind of started with seven day. It's like people that we asked for sponsorships or people we asked for donations for whatever it may be. And I kind of had people I knew for that or people I knew I could ask for something or whatever it was. And then when I was with my previous nonprofit, kind of the same thing, just either people that I had met or business owners I had met and being able and comfortable to ask for either money or items or in kind or whatever. Um, And it's hard to do that a lot of the time. I've realized being in a nonprofit sector, a lot of times people are scared to ask for things. They're scared to ask for money or a donation or a sponsorship or whatever it is because they they just feel awkward, you know, and they feel like out of place and they're like, well, they're not getting anything out of it. I'm like, well, one, it's tax deductible. So mm, yay. And two, they're helping something they care about. Like if they don't care about it and they don't want to give their money, they don't have to, like they're not obligated to. Um, but yeah, it, the event that we're having for the Humane Society at the end of April, um, my boss goes, I want to sell an auction. And I was like, all right, cool. So I messaged a whole bunch of people. And then I think like the first day I had like 15 businesses here in town. They were like, hell yeah, we'll give you something. What do you want? And I was just like, what, what do you mean? What do I want? Yeah. Like, I, excuse me. And like a Nikki with made in Corpus Christi, she goes, yeah, just come oh, in and pick whatever you her. want. And I was like, girl, excuse me. And then my husband goes, who are you? That Nikki is like, oh, just come into my store and pick things. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, who am I? Like, what? And 
um, Sam with, um, oh my goodness, Lavender and Lee, the jewelry company. I asked her for a donation and she was like, yeah, like, what do you, what do you want? And so I went to her shop and she kind of pulls out all this jewelry and goes, so do you want like two sets or just one? And I was like, uh, your stuff isn't cheap. Like, what do you mean? Do I want two (laughs) sets? Are you just going to give me like $400 for the jewelry? And I think that just kind of goes back to you attract the vibe you give out. So I've realized that a lot of the local business owners that I've connected with and are friends now, we're all kind of the same. Like I've noticed like our speech is kind of the same. We emulate the same values. We run into the same, each other at the same events all the time. And I just think somehow I got really, really lucky and attracted the right people at the right times. Um, and they've stayed. Um, it, I, my, um, when I interviewed for my job here at the Humane Society, our board president said in on one of my interviews and he was asking me some questions about event planning and whatever. And he goes, well, what about decorations? Like, what would you do for decorations? And I was like, well, if it's more like a vintagey kind of feel and whatever, I'd probably ask Terry with wildflowers. And he goes, how do you know Terry? And I was like, well, how do you know Terry? And it was just kind of that connection where he was like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. I can trust what she's saying. She's making the right connections for the right reasons and she's able to implement them where they need to go. Um, and that's one of the things I'm really happy about that a most local business owners are super excited and willing to give money where they can. And if not, they're, they'll do in-kind donations. And if not, they give their time and they attend the events or they help promote it on their social media channels, which in the time of being aesthetically pleasing is super helpful because it might not fit their vibe or what they usually post, but they're willing to do it because they know it's going to help better the community as a whole. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Like I doing this podcast, I've met so many people uh, going season seven now. And when this comes out, we'll be recording season eight and it's like the amount of people that are willing to just help and want to help. And that's like, it's very inspiring. And like you said, I think it's, it's very it's strange. Cause we like, you, I grew up here and I moved away as well. <laughs> I moved to Houston yeah. and came back and it's like, man, like Corpus is not bad. It's just, yeah. we gotta, you gotta make, and I feel like the tides are turning. I feel like we are like the people that own all those shops downtown and the small business owners that are opening on the South side and everywhere, mid city, central city. And even out here where I live in Cal Allen, you know, I think that everyone here is just like, we're like the tide that Corpus needed. I think it's finally happening, you know? Yeah. I was like, did we just all come of age at the right time? Like, (laughs) yeah, I know. Yeah. Cause there's so many cool people and everyone wants to help. And so I love that, but now is the time for you to plug your website, social media, anything that you like to plug, where can people find you and get to know a little bit more, more about what you and what you do. So for me personally, my website is just mariagpettis.com. Um, my Instagram, it's my nickname that I've had for years, but it's yaya10142. Um, and then for work for the Humane Society, our website is gchscc.org. And if anyone wants to reach out to me professionally, um, my email address for work is mpettis at gchcc.org. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Maria, for being here today. I really enjoyed our conversation. I love that we're vibing. I could feel it because time usually, <laughs> like time flies by all the time, but I'm like, oh yeah, time is like flying by now. <laughs> so I appreciate your time. And for our listeners out there, wherever you're listening, please head out into the community that you live in and do something good. Make a positive change wherever you live. Thank you guys. Until next time, we'll talk soon. Mm-hmm.